Oh, that's what I wanted to show you. It was this guy. Oh! So this little guy. Um, guy wanted 50 for it. I said, I'll give you 30. And he, like, played hard to get. So, but he still got me. He got me for $40. We agreed on 40 but it was 40 So this is my old woofer. Um, and I got it from Epsilon. Um, it, I think they sold it under the SPL brand. It was, like, one of the last series. It was, like... Mini Gorilla or something like that, GRLA or something like that. Um, it's a, it's all Epsilon, which is power acoustic, and um, it's just a good little 400 watt 10, and it, it's dual two. It's got sewn leads. You can see in there. I see in there. Sewn leads. It's got some sag going on to it, but it, it's totally broken. So the guy hosed me for 40 bucks. But the memories that it brought back, I was like, I only got to do about 20 of these before they ran out, and I was like, fuck. Cause this was a good money maker. I buy it for like, uh, right around 35, 35 from uh, Epsilon. And then I would, uh, resell it for about a hundred, 150. And all I, all I would do is I think, hey, let me find out. Let me, let me cut this off. So this is my cap, but let me cut it off real quick to see what I did. So if you guys don't know how to cut this, David, David Moore from PSI showed me this, which was that. Let me hold it with my chubby belly. Cut it this way, and you cut it this way, and then it doesn't, you don't have to go all the way to the top, but it, what it does is it gives you enough leverage that you can just peel it away. Okay, they did an inner cap, so I removed their cap. So I removed the old one, they used an inner cap, and this is great because once you get that cap off, if for some reason um, it doesn't play low enough, which is, which is quite often uh, on a 10 inch, um, then you can add some uh, epoxy or even washers right there to add a little bit of mass to make it a little uh, heavier so that it'll play, yeah. Here's some rubbing. Hell, let's cut it up and let me put this down. So this is one of the last uh, rebrand uh, woofers I did uh, before the move, which was in 2014. So it's that old. So it's, is that, is that 10 years? Yeah, it's almost 10 years old. So you can see somebody bottomed it out. It's rubbing copper coil which is nice I did see a little bit of age right there that's not from me that's just age and he uses a nice little two inch coil I'll pull that uh, screen out and uh, I'll grind it make sure you tape off the gap when you grind it because this is steel and you don't want the steel to get in there it's like a 1032 yeah it's a good little woofer and then this is the stamped steel version of the wraparound gasket which is nice we can just clean that up with some turtle jizz and it'll be fine. And then I'll probably put, I'll probably make this one a dual eight. Cause I, again, I, I never treat myself. I always provide for others. Uh, and that's good. That's what you should be doing. Let me see. Is this it? No, that's the, a dire. There they are. These are the dual fours. And then here's the dual eight. So the dual eight is actually like a six ohm DCR. And that's pretty standard in uh, audio, just so you know. I think, yeah, cause this one fits everything. I like that. It's a little sloppy floppy. Yep, the D4 fits as well. So I'll have to decide what amp I want to use with it. Um, even though, yeah, the original was a dual two. So the gap is going to be a little on the large side anyway. So as you can see there. Uh, and the difference in coils is just that uh, on the two ohm they use bigger wire. That's all. Um, some of the more finer or the higher the impedance, the, the smaller the wire. You also get more turns, more more uh, windings in the gap. So that's medium, small, small windings, large windings. And of course, if you go bigger, I showed you guys that. Here's the Slim Jim copper flat. Again, f flat versus round doesn't matter. Um, that has to do with just fitting in the dimensions of the gap. That's why it's best to design the coil first and then design the gap after the coil. Uh, these turds. So this is the uh, dual Lord of Base part number. I doubt they have them anymore. Uh, dual 0.25. Look how big that wire is. See? So you actually get less windings. Especially compared to like a dual four, like uh, this is the Adire one. I just put the extension on it, um, and these are waiting for 
uh, work with a uh, TI frame. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, there's my Slim Jim. Some guy in New Zealand wants like three of these, and I was like, okay, it's like a hundred bucks to ship them. I'm like, go for it. So, uh, oh, there's a website that I found. Um, I think it's probably run by like somebody related to, at Nippon America, uh, which is Audio Pipe, um, because they have uh, lots of recon kits. I think it's like reconkits.com or .net or something like that. I'll put a link to it in the description. You guys can check it out. It's just a good. Um, it's just a good website to look for recon kits. I think I saw a lot of American Base and some other uh, popular recon kits. This is what I wanted to show you. Cactus Sounds. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me finish that thought, which is, um, it's just a good website to keep track of. Sometimes you can buy a kit cheaper than you can buying the parts. Sometimes, not all the time. Uh, also, um, Wholesale House is clearing out a lot of the American base stuff. And so they uh, have some kits. I picked up a Hawk kit. And then, what's funny is the Hawk kit was so cheap. I think it was like only 40, 50 bucks. I'll build a whole woofer around the, the kit. <laughs> so I only got one just to just to do it for shits and giggles. But uh, this is the 0.63 dual Cactus Sounds. Uh, Cactus Sounds was originally developed by uh, Tilo Stompler of TC Sounds. And uh, the guys were here in North Phoenix, if I remember right. Uh, they were located up there near where Fusion, I think, used to be. I don't think Fusion's here anymore. Uh, it's up there, like, Deer something. I forget if it's Deer Park, Deer Crossing, or something. Some shit. Way the fuck up there. I don't, I don't go up there on the way to Flagstaff. But um, they have it in a dual 0.63. I think I have dual 0.63, dual 0.76. And then I got, uh, this one's dual 0.3. And then I think I have two of those. <sighs> so, and basically the Cactus Sounds uh, 4HP was um, a blackened zinc. It's, it's blackened with zinc. It's not black steel, but it's blackened with zinc. Uh, zinc coated. Um, the, the original Team RF uh, was a... Uh, Atilo did, you know, the clear zinc coating on a lot of his woofers. And uh, the, the Cactus Sounds was a thin gap version of the 4HP uh, meant for just burps. And uh, it was the same motor, same uh, specs and gap as the Team RF. So these will fit the Team RF uh, motor if you got them. So, and the 0.3 is a little bit shorter. It looks about 50 millimeter. And this looks about like 60. Again, it's real short former because it's just meant to get a uh, really thick spider pack, you know, something like that. A whole shit ton of spiders all together. And then you burp it. Burp. And then you go, oh, I won a contest. So not that that means anything. These are a lot of the ones I keep for my library. I got rid of the ones uh, that were out in the rain. It's like, eh, I don't really need to save them. And I love the old uh, TC Sound stuff. I just like looking at it. Not that I would rebuild it, because um, there's a lot of bad things I don't like about it. But the look, you know, that's nice. It's really nice. There's good times before 9-11, that kind of stuff. It's the Gonzo coil, the original Gonzo coil. I gotta redo this one. All copper, 50 millimeter wine height. I love these. I bought cases and cases and cases of these from uh, Precision Econo Wine, Dual 2, Dual 4. Um, this was my upgrade when I did the Sunfire woofer uh, and a bunch of other woofers that fit uh, so many. Uh, oh, we used it on the SPLX. We got pallets and pallets of that from Epsilon that I went through. If you guys need dust caps, let me know. Uh, tell you what, I'll do a special. If you do Handy's Not Hate hashtag on your social media, I'll give these to you for $15, right? Because the power of five, the power of peace is in your fist. And so uh, we got all these colors. And you're like, oh, you're not going to pay with me. Credit card. Fucking pussy. Um, uh, I'll put them on the uh, UNI site. Uh, U-E-N-I. It's a, uh, I bought it for like 150 bucks and it's, um, they're supposed to, I guess they skim the PayPal numbers or something like that. That's how they make money. But unless you know, I still got all these caps. We already put all these in inventory. So I got them all counted. What else? Oh yeah, we got the racks. We got all my gaskets in, got some cones. We got more stuff coming. Did she show up yet? 
All right. In an hour. I think she flaked. Huh? I think she flaked. Yeah. I'll I'll call her. Hmm. Go ahead and pause it and look at all this cool stuff. D9. This is all going to um, what's his face in Texas. Send me another hundred bucks, bro. Send me a hundred bucks a week. So I can pay Arnold. Angry Arnold. So angry. Oh, that's the other one. I wanted to do a dedicated video on this. This one came back. Uh, this is the one that I used, uh, yeah, the Gonzo coil on. Uh, I don't like this frame. This is the RE audio frame. Uh, the motor shifted. I want to see how much heat damage it did. Um, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Um, somebody was saying, oh, you need to have a thicker top plate, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? So you need to have a thicker top plate in order to handle more power? That's one way to do it. You know, it's just a big heat sink. So, but the best subwoofer maker in the world, do they use a thick top plate? Nope. That's regular half inch mild steel. It's not any magic steel like what Phi uses. That 1010, whatever. Whatever he was advertising, I was like, uh, you know, I thought I was like a, a pimp know-it-all when I was contacting China asking for 1010 steel. And they're like, who are you? What are you? They're like, you're a loser. What are you asking for? I was like, oh, sorry. I thought 1010 steel was magic. Or it was like the best of the best. No, it was probably just what um, Scott got a deal on and then bragged about it. It was some sort of magic combination. Um, all they do is add more or less carbon to it to make it harder uh, or more rust, rust resistant. If I remember the, the Cutco demo that they were telling us about, they made their stainless steel out of something and it's like really hard stainless steel, which is harder than normal so that it can keep an edge, but it wouldn't rust. I think dinner's almost ready. Sherry's making pork chops and apple sauce. Um, I think that was it. Finished this tonight. Uh, we got, um, let me show you his coils. This is Danny's. So we're doing these on the um, TI frames. So they're all cured, ready to go. I think we did single two of them because he's doing it on a, I want to say a sound cubed 4500, which is a, a bit heavy for two 12s, but okay, they're not my woofers. Uh, and then I'm still going to build these out. So these are going to be available too. These are 15 inch top assemblies for the Solo X small motor, and they'll come with an adapter already on them. So you just bolt them on and play. So and this is uh, Herschel's, is it Herschel? Hershey? I forget. Um, I gotta terminate these tonight and put the cone on it. And then, uh, here we go. I'm gonna finish this little baby tonight as well. And uh, I gotta finish this one. Somebody was saying do a whole video on this. This thing is super simple. I mean, it's a pain in the butt in many ways because when you do an actual recone, the cone is already in place. So getting these on is a pain in the butt. Um, and I gotta see, it, um, Jacob didn't even make the bolt on the terminal long enough, so you have to use a simple non-locking nut and then glue the shit out of it. Yeah, so I mean, somebody was like getting mad that I was talking shit about Sundown. Dude, Sundown is not as awesome as you think. Uh, there's a lot of problems. And what's funny is I used to bring them up to Jacob and Jacob would just like ignore me. I'm like, okay, it's your, it's your company, go for it. I'm like, I would take care of this. I would take care of this, but it's his company. So he don't care. Uh, 150 for anybody that wants this. 150 shipped. Uh, one of the leads is burned on it. So I don't really have time to take it out and rebuild it. And it uses the same gap as the old ones. It's just the motor's a little bit bigger. Uh, somebody was asking me about this surround, it's slightly bigger than the ones that we have. I haven't had time. It's also thicker. I can tell just by pushing on it. Is it foam? I think it's foam. No, it's rubber. It's rubber and it's like got a cool looking trim ring, but this is just a dust cap. 
And then um, I do have this cone. Let me show you real quick. Yeah, some of the racks are mixed up. I gotta come all the way in here to get some stuff. Oh, I have these two, these uh, Audio Pulse. I think they're Audio Pulse. It's for the 5100 um, Neo PA. Let me see. Ooh, they're aluminum. That's why I don't like it. No, they're blank. Um, but they were used for the uh, Aura Sounds Beehive motor. Uh, it's for PA. It's really light with a, an accordion surround. Oh! Jacob Fuller must have invented this. Oh, it hadn't existed for 30 years before him at all. Um, oh, this is what I was looking for. Oh, yeah, this is <laughs> this is what I keep sometimes. This was a JLW6, and this guy torched it. So it's pretty bad if you got to do that, but that was a real winner. So this is the one I got. This is the Polycone Rever Surround. I don't think it's quite as big a roll as the W6, but it, it makes a good um, alternative. I use it sometimes. I use it on the Diamond Audio D3. We did dozens and dozens of those. Um, uh, I think I'll use it on the W6 too as well. I use the 200 millimeter uh, concave cap, which sits right about here on this edge. So you can uh, adhere it to there and then just put a decal on it. It's good to go. Uh, you do have to stretch out the butthole a little bit. I use a... Uh, one of those cupped wire brushes it just happens to fit perfectly you got to spin it fast enough for it to get a little soft and melt and then it goes in there and it ends up cutting it out to what is it two and three quarters whatever the stupid jail standard is and then jacob's like i'm gonna make the new sa version two the same as the jl coil because i want to suck on jail's balls uh, they like the tickle of my beard weirdo what else? I think that was it. Oh, yeah. Let me show you this one. This is... Uh, I still haven't taken out the blocks. I can take them out right now. Um, this is the Uber LMS for James. The NT Master. NT Ass Master. Um, I went ahead and put beads down there to kind of help reinforce it. And then I got the... Um, Bolts from Zorro. Uh, Zorro. I think it's Zorro.com. This other ends up collecting a lot of shrapnel. It's the problem that we had last time on that guy. It's just workspace. I got too many projects going at once. It's because everybody wants affordable woofers. What do you know? So I think these are slightly long, which I got on purpose, and then I have to cut them down a little bit. Uh, but I'll put epoxy on each one of these, and then clank, and the bolt comes from the bottom up, and then fastens on the, the flip side of the top plate. It's like that. We'll get that rest off a little bit. And then what I did is I went back and I coated all the spots that were uh, exposed with a little bit of epoxy. So that way they won't rust. And it should last for 20, 30 years. And it'll be awesome. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you with the, the Neo um, Wet Sounds slash a Dyer Audio. Well, I should say Dan Wiggins. So, because Andrew has a Dyer now. Uh, yeah, this. So, one thing that I like about these slugs or these motors is that they have the hole already through them. So, uh, we can put hardware straight through them. To bolt everything together so we'll do like a, an array of three or four to give us the clearance put a bolt through that it's good to go oh i have uh let me see one day i'll wash my butthole in the shower one day oh i already moved them oh, oh there they are johnny d these are Johnny D's, uh, this is, again, this motor is from the um, Sir Juan Vega S-Max, shallow motor. Let me show you what they look like. Did we already, did we already, oh, I already moved them. This is the original, what it looks like. And this sat in the front of the woofer. Uh, it was a copy of the um, 
Is it Illum it wasn't Illuminati? Ah, fuck, I forgot it. They were a local company too. Uh, Illusion, Illusion Audio. So, but uh, these are gonna go on Johnny D's. He's gonna, he's gonna do some rad ass 15s. He's getting this old steel. This steel was from, uh, I actually got this steel from uh, Thomas Moen, the uh, 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 box by Sonic, BBS. And um, they, they were some MCM 21s. And he's like, these are blown, you want them, we'll do some trades. And I, I think I sold them, uh, or traded them some parts. So here they are. It's ready to go. This bolts onto that. Boom. And then there's your T-yoke. And then I gotta figure out how many stacks. I think I only have two right now, so two is gonna be tall enough. And then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four per motor, which is what we did on Josh's, Josh Pastrana's uh, Delio on his uh, HCCA. 18 so that's what did we say 3,000 watts basically 3,000 watts of neo but i like this one better see josh is, is leaked over a little bit the, the plates weren't quite big enough so that one turned out okay i ended up having to do the whole thing with just black paint and it turned out pretty good but um this other one for johnny d will uh it'll encapsulate more and i want to do some cool laser stuff on the back for him so he's into that warhammer 40k Oh, um, these are for Pickle Rick, Ricky C, he's over in uh, Saudi, 